Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repo Products. This video is a recording for an end user request. The request is how to create a fire sprinkler system in Revit. Um, here I have Revit 2018.2. I have a small model that I created with some doors and walls and a ceiling and some light fixtures and some plan return diffusers. When I'm in the ceiling plan for the electrical, I can see that I've placed sprinkler heads here in the ceiling. If you want to go through the process of creating your fire sprinkler system, the first thing you want to do is head over to the Manage tab of the ribbon, head over to MEP settings, and get into the mechanical settings. The reason you do this is because you want to head over to your pipe settings and make any necessary adjustments in this dialog box to suit your design needs. For example, angles. Uh, the default is use any angle, but you can switch it to use specific angles that are industry standard. You have different conversion capability. So for us, we want to take a look at the system classification that's going to be fire protection. We can choose any one of the four that they give us. So for example, if I choose wet, I can go into the main setting and specify whatever type that I want. And I'll leave it as copper and I'll set it as 11 feet high. And the reason I did this is because the standard default project is 10 feet high. The standard ceiling is uh, 8 feet high. So from level 1 to level 2 is 10. So I figured I'd just place it at that height. It's easier to see in the view. In the same respect, you want to do the branch as well. So go through the process of specifying the wet, the dry, the pre-action, and other if necessary. If you need to, you can get over to segments and sizes for the different types of segments that you're working with, fluids, slopes, and calculations. When you're finished, click OK. That's the first step. The second step is to place the actual fire sprinkler heads where they need to go. So head over to the Systems tab of the ribbon, head over to the Electrical, and you can see they have under Plumbing and Piping Sprinkler Command. When you use this command in the type selector, they've got a few for you to work with. Just pick the one that you want to work with. Um, make sure in the contextual tab of the ribbon, you are specifying how you are placing it. So in this instance, you wouldn't place it on a vertical face unless the sprinkler head is designed to be placed on, say, a wall, and it shoots out towards the space. Uh, most people will choose place on face, and they'll touch the face of the ceiling and that way the sprinkler head knows it's hosted by that ceiling. You can also choose to place it on a work plane if you have a work plane to work with. Since I've already placed them, I can select one of them and you'll see what it is and you'll see the height that I placed it at. Once all the sprinkler heads are placed, that's the second step. The third step is to tell the software all of these sprinkler heads need to belong to a system. So select any one of the sprinkler heads that you've created <clears throat> In the contextual tab of the ribbon, you'll see Modify Sprinklers. And in here, you have a Create Systems panel. Choose Piping. And you'll get a window called Create Piping System. In here, you can pick the type that you want to work with. This will be dependent upon what type of sprinkler head that you are placing and using. So in this example, we're going to use a fire protection wet. You can also choose to give it any name that you want. And you can also place a check mark to open it in the system browser uh, and editor directly. So I'll click OK. And you'll get a pinkish skin to um, tone colored contextual tab in the ribbon called Edit Piping System. And in here you have Add to System, Remove to System, and Select Equipment, and then Finish and Cancel. By default, Add to System is, placed, is um, highlighted. So it's asking you to pick all the other sprinkler heads that belong to the system. So I'll just choose all of them. Um, if I have a specific piece of equipment that um, I want to use in the family to tie to this system, I can choose Select Equipment and touch it. Or I can pull it from this drop-down list. I don't have any, so it's not going to give me a list. I'll click Finish for now. And the third step is finished. So we have told the software these objects are part of a system. And now we need to tell the software, um, create the system 
automatically. So that way we don't have to manually draw all of the pipes from the uh, base point of where the water source is um, to all of the sprinkler heads. So I can pick any one of the sprinkler heads again. And now you'll notice <clears throat> in the Modify Sprinklers contextual tab under the Layout panel, there is the command general Generate Layout. So I'll start the command. And you'll notice that you have solutions, the ability to edit the layout, removing from the system, placing a base water source, specifying a slope, and then finishing the design. In the Options toolbar, you have different solution types like network, perimeter, and intersection. And within those different solution types, there are multiple solutions. So what I typically do is I'll place a base. And uh, for this example, I'll just place it over here. Now, when you initially place it, it doesn't give you the option to specify the elevation. It gets grayed out, but you can adjust it after the fact. So I'm just going to place it here, and you'll get a very quick little warning that will disappear. And that's to let you know that you've placed it at a um, zero height right now. So once you've placed it, you'll see in the contextual options toolbar, specify the height. So I'm going to specify it, say, uh, 12.5 feet high. And the diameter, I'll specify, say, one and a half inch for now. Then click Solutions to get back to your different solutions. And under Network, you'll notice it changes. So earlier it had two possible solutions under Network. Now it has five because I've placed that base point. Now you can use these arrows to cycle through the different designs and pick what you think makes the most sense for your design. This is all based upon you know, your engineering design requirements and the architectural um, design requirements so that way it doesn't interfere with any ductwork or piping. So for now, um, that's what all the different solutions are for network. If I switch to perimeter, you'll have different choices as well. If I switch to intersection, you'll get different choices as well. So for now, I'm going to use the uh, network and solution one of five just for the sake of speed and also for thinking about how much uh, piping is created in one linear fashion. So this is fairly efficient to build and put together. Also, if you need to specify slope, you can specify the slope. And also, there is a settings button right here in the options toolbar. Make sure you check this and verify that the main pipe conversion setting is set to what you want for the type of pipe and specify for the correct um, offset level, uh, the height. You can adjust it manually if this was not initially specified, but it makes um, more logical sense to set this up initially. That was step one. Now that you're finished with the design, if you have to modify the line work, you can click Edit Layout, and you can pick a line, and it will give you the little grip arrow so you can push and pull if you need to to adjust the placement. And then you can click back to Solutions. And then once everything is flushed out the way you want, click Finish Layout, and it will create the fire sprinkler system for you. If you get any errors or warnings, they'll pop up in the lower right-hand corner. If we switch to a 3D view, you can see what it looks like. Also, switch your view from coarse or medium to fine. And if you do that, you can start to see the physical 3D geometry of the piping. Uh, it looks a little nicer and easier to read. And so there you have a fire uh, sprinkler system that's created with the little sprinkler heads that I placed in the ceiling earlier. Hope this helps. Thank you very much.